All right, let's talk about cables today. So I recently started teaching Zoom classes for Beat Kitchen School. They're really cool. If you haven't heard of them, I'll put uh, links in the description so you can check them out. I am biased, but, uh, you know, we're all biased in a lot of ways. So anyway, point is, we were talking about this in class, and I figured this would be a really good video topic for today. So what I want to do is just talk about some of the more commonly seen cables that we, that we see in studio work and some details about them. And the specific thing that I wanted to talk about today and touch upon today is the difference between balanced and unbalanced cables, among a few other details about these cables types, and specifically how balanced cables can remove noise, can reduce noise. Okay, so I have a few props here. I actually have one, two, three, four types of cables on my desk here. And each of these is slightly different in a different way. So you'll notice, I'll hold them up hopefully things focus. Um, if not, maybe I'll put some images on the screen or something. Um, but you'll notice I have one XLR cable here. And so XLR cables, they have the three pins. Um, they're the typical type of cable that you see when we use microphones in a studio. It's like the standard microphone cable nowadays. Um, and the way the XLR works is we have three pins, two are for signal and one is for ground. And that's gonna come into play here in a minute. Um, sometimes you might see, for example, people using XLR cables to plug in their studio monitors. There are a few other uses for them, but they're kind of considered to be like the standard cable for a microphone. That's probably where you would see them the most frequently. So then I have three other cables here and they all have this type of end. And so this size and type of end that you see on cables is what we call a quarter inch end. So you might've seen a smaller version of something that looks very similar. For example, our headphones often have a smaller version of this, of something very similar to this. And that's what we call an eighth inch cable end or eighth inch adapter. If it's an adapter, right? You might've heard that phrase before. And so these, we commonly use these as instrument cables. For example, if you're plugging an electric guitar into a DI or into a set of pedals or into an amp, you might use this type of cable for that. We sometimes see them with our cable runs and our snakes, for example, our cable snakes. You might see them connecting pieces of equipment together, right? So for example, outboard gear being connected to a interface, for example, or a soundboard. Um, there's a few ranges of how we tend to use this type of cable. You might have also seen them being used to plug into studio monitors as well. And so I have a few different versions of what looks to be a very similar type of cable to this, right? So they may look very, very similar at first, but they are slightly different. So I have this one that I'm holding up, right? This is just happens to be the first quarter inch cable that I picked up for this video. There's no reason why this is the first one I picked up, but it has, if you notice, it has a single stripe here on the end of the cable. So there's one single stripe. I also have a version that has two stripes on it. So see, there's two stripes here. Hopefully you can see that. If not, I can put an image on the screen. Um, so we have a version that has two stripes and then we have a version that is a bit thicker, right? And I'll talk about the differences between all of these. So to begin with, we talked about the XLR and how it has three pins, right? And so let's talk about the difference between these two versions of the cable, the one with the single stripe and the one with the double stripe. So the difference is that the one with the single stripe, we call this a TS cable, so tip and sleeve. And then the one with two stripes, we call a tip ring sleeve, so TRS. So we have a TS cable, TRS cable. And so the difference between these cables is if you look at the stripes, they're actually separating different metal sections, right? And so each one is connected to a different wire within the cable. So you have tip sleeve, TS, and what this one does is it has the tip can carry signal and then the sleeve is for the ground. And so it's the same type of ground that you probably heard about with like electronics, for example, grounding the electronics. So then we have the tip ring sleeve one, right? So TRS. And so this one, the tip and the ring, both can carry a signal. And then the sleeve is a ground as well. So both of these, the sleeve is the ground. And we either have TR that can both carry their own signal and or we just have the tip that can carry a signal. So the big difference between these is that this one with one stripe is mono. And then this one with two stripes is stereo. It's going to have stereo capabilities. So another way that you might have heard people describe these, and this is basically saying the same thing, but it tends to be used in a slightly different connotation, is that um, this one is balanced. The stereo one is balanced. And then this mono one is what we call unbalanced. 
So with what we just talked about, some of this may be fairly familiar to all of you, um, but with what we just talked about, it might be fairly obvious that um, the XLR cable is going to be the most similar to the TRS cable, the stereo balanced cable. And that's because they have essentially three wires inside them, right? So you have two wires for signal, two wires for signal, and then a ground, so a ground. Um, so that's three wires all together. So we often see cables, for example, that may start with an XLR on one end and end with a quarter inch on the other end. And that's fine, right? It's kind of carrying the same thing. It's just a different way of plugging in. It's a different mechanism for plugging in. Um, I'm not sure if there's any significant difference there between that. Um, with the XLR, all three points go in at the same exact time, so that's probably the biggest difference. Whereas with this one, it goes in in a series, right? Because of the physicality of the attachment, right? Um, but yeah, the biggest difference has to do with you know whether or not your equipment has the port to receive the cable, right? The um, the ability to receive that cable. All right, so what else did I want to talk about? I wanted to talk about the difference between the speaker cable and the instrument cable, for example. So. Uh, with this one, this one is a speaker cable and this one is an instrument cable. And so in this specific example, I have the mono, the TS cable is the instrument cable. We commonly use the mono cables with things like guitars. You know, that's a very common use case for this type of cable. Um, and then this one, the big difference here is the thickness of the cable, the gauge of the cable. So that means that this cable can handle more power being sent out to it. So the big thing to know, the big takeaway here is that these cables can handle a stronger, a more powerful signal being sent out to them, right? So in colloquial terms and in a practical use case, it's good to know that if you're plugging in a system that requires speaker cables, so for example, like a high powered PA system, and you're using something like this that is an instrument cable, it's a thinner gauge, it's not made for that purpose, then what can happen is you have a fire risk on your hands. Um, so these cables can get too hot when you try to send too much signal to them and they can start to melt or they can actually catch on fire. So that's the big thing to know. <laughs> that's really important. That's something that I learned when I was doing live sound years ago is that there is a big difference here and you might get away with it. Um, you might be lucky, you might get away with it, but if you want to do things right, make sure that if you're setting up with, for example, a big PA system that requires a speaker cable, make sure that you actually get and use a speaker cable and you don't just use your guitar cables, for example. Okay, so that's pretty much what I wanted to say about the speaker cable um, and about the instrument cable. And now what I wanna talk about is how these balance cables cancel out noise. And this is the coolest part. This is the whole reason why I'm making this video. I think this is so cool. It's such a smart, way to engineer something and I, I just flipping love it. Okay, so the reason why something like this works, something that is balanced, that has, for example, the TRS or the three uh, wire system, right? Something that is a balanced cable, for example, these two, as opposed to something like this that is unbalanced, that has just the mono signal capabilities. And the way this works, and the reason why you might wanna use one of these cables, even if you're just sending mono signal out, is because what happens is you get the signal sent out both of the signal wires. So the tip and the ring, or the other two signal, signal wires, and for example, an XLR, right? You still have the ground being a ground, but the signal sent out to both wires. And so what, what they do is they flip the polarity on one of those wires. So you have, for example, on the tip wire, you have signal going up and then down. If it's something like a sine wave, it's going to be going up and then down. And then if the polarity is flipped on the other wire, the ring wire, for example, with our TRS cable, um, the signal will be going down initially. So exactly where the first one goes up, the other one will be going down. It's just flipped polarity. So it's flipped 180 on the axis if you're looking at the waveform. And so if you've ever experimented with flipping polarity in a DAW, for example, if you take, it has to be the same exact sound file. You duplicate a track, make it exactly the same thing, and you flip the polarity on one so that it's flipped 180 on the axis. What happens is those get summed together in the computer before going out to your speakers and you get absolute silence. And that's because whenever the one is going up by a certain amount, the other one's going down by the same amount and that gets neutralized to zero. So there's no movement for the speaker cone. There's no movement to create sound, right? There's no waveform, there's no sound. So it gets completely canceled out. So as our mono signal travels down this type of cable, 
what happens is we have two different signals that if they were summed together, they would cancel themselves out, completely cancel themselves out. So these signals travel down the wire, right? And whatever your, your cable run is, it travels down the wire and it may pick up noise. And so that's something that can happen if you run your cables near power cables, for example, it might pick up some noise. Um, there can be electrical interference. There's like a bunch of different things that can cause a cable to get um, to get noise into it, right? So it picks up some noise and hopefully it doesn't pick up too much noise, but it does happen, right? And so what happens on the other end of your cable run is that we have these signals. One has a polarity flip, they're running along, they pick up their noise. And because they're within the same cable, they should pick up about the same noise, right? About the same, hopefully the same, right? And so this idea takes advantage of that. And so on the other end, what happens is to translate it back, we take the one signal that had its polarity flipped and we flip it back. And so now you have two signals that are both going up at the same time for the wanted sound. But because they picked up the same noise along the run, the noise now has polarity flipped on one version of it on the, you know, if you're flipping the ring. I don't remember which one gets flipped. But if you're flipping the ring signal, for example, the the noise on the ring signal wire has now been flipped. And so that causes the noise to be canceled out because of that polarity flip effect. And so now what you've successfully done is you've run signal through a cable and you've picked up noise along the way, and then you found a way to cancel it out on the other end because of what you did at the beginning of the cable run. So I think that is just the coolest thing ever. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, if that makes sense to you. Um, I tried to explain it in a way that would make sense, but you know, it's kind of hard sometimes. Yeah, that's it. I think it's really cool engineering. It's fairly simple, but it's so smart. It's such a smart design. And I think it's really, really cool. And I'm kind of surprised that I never made a video about it because I, I do think it's a really cool concept. And I guess I just kind of got caught up in these like Pro Tools tips and tricks and stuff. And so um, I thought it'd be fun to kind of change things up today. But let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, you know, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd appreciate all of that stuff. It really helps me. Um, I have a Patreon. It helps support my channel being independent. Um, I don't uh, get a ton from Google, so it really helps. So thank you so much to my Patreons. If you want to check out my Patreon, it's patreon.com slash noise. And we have a Discord server we're hanging out on. We're running a book club on there. It's been a lot of fun. It's, um, everyone's very supportive and into it and passionate about audio and music production. And I've really been enjoying it. So um, I think other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. I don't know what to say. I still have on my thread list, uh, I have a link to it in the description, but I still have like these notebooks that you can get if you want to get these notebooks. I really love this design. My friend Becca made it. Um, it's an exploded diagram of a microphone. Um, you can probably guess which microphone. But um, I've been using this one as my desk a notebook for recording and stuff with clients. So I always have a notebook here. I take notes when we're tracking. I take notes as we're working. Um, it just helps me kind of keep things organized. So um, it's it's been a thing for me for a long time is having a notebook right here on my desk. So um, I'm really excited to be using this one that has this design. So um, you can check that out, I guess, if you want. If you want to check it out. You don't have to check it out. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. I hope you're all doing well. And I'll talk soon.